So this is a uh, close reading of a very short passage in King Lear. Um, <clears throat> so this is a passage uh, very, very near, virtually at the end of the play. Um, so this is scene 24, lines 312 through 315. And this is Albany speaking, and he says, uh, so, I'll give you a little background quickly. Um, so Lear has just died, so there's Kent and Albany and Edgar, like, hanging out, being like, uh, the king is dead, everything is terrible. Also, Goneril and Bacon are dead, so, and Cordelia. So the entire royal family just wiped out in true Shakespearean style. And Albany says to Kent and Edgar, or, uh, so I guess this first line is actually two attendants, but, uh, our present business is to general woe, and then to Kent and Edgar, Friends of my soul, you twain rule this rule in this kingdom, and the gored state sustain. So Albany, who is the only one who's probably next in line to the throne, uh, because he was married to um, Goneril. Uh, he's the only one of the royal fam of this sort of immediate circle of royal family who's still alive. Um, so Lear is dead. Uh, Goneril, Regan, and Cordelia are all dead. Regan's husband, uh, Cornwall, is dead. So Albany probably should inherit the kingdom, and yet he's like, "Hey, Kent, who was banished and." all of his lands taken over by the king, and Edgar, who was cast out uh, and became an outlaw and a beggar, why don't you guys be sort of joint king? So first off, aside from the obvious sort of nonsensicalness of this choice, of these two people who are in no way uh, sort of qualified to inherit the throne, There's a, I mean, there's a huge problem with this ending. I mean, even though Kent says, no, suicide for me, thanks. Um, there's a, it, but there's not another solution. Like, there's no, and this is a problem for me because King Lear is a play all about the problems of inheritance and the sort of necessity of a singular authority, perhaps, the necessity of unity for the kingdom. But it's a play very concerned with who gets to wield power, whatever sort of other themes we, we bring into it. And nobody at the end of this play is going to wield power. Like, at the end of Hamlet, for instance, when everybody in the noble family, everybody in the royal family has been slaughtered, Fortinbras shows up out of the blue and is like, Hey man, I'll be king. And Hamlet's like, yes, I vote for him. Now I'm dead. At Macbeth, we have a new king of Scotland after all the chaos of Macbeth's rule. At the end of King Lear, it, Albany is just like, you know what, I don't really want to do it. Why don't you guys, who are not qualified to do it, take over the kingdom? And Kent is like, nope, suicide. And it's... I think this is one of the reasons why... Uh, Nahum Tate, for instance, rewrote the end of Lear is because, unlike almost every other Shakespeare play, where you go from order to chaos to order, in King Lear you go from order 
to chaos to slightly less violent chaos. Like, there's no good resolution at the end. It's just... Now there's no king. And that's, and that's really where the play ends. And it's... It's not satisfying. It's a bad ending. And you wonder, or I wonder at least, whether or not... I wonder why. Like, I don't... That's the thing, is I don't understand why it's a bad ending. Because, I mean, if this was written roughly 1605, Shakespeare's got... a decade or more of experience writing plays. So he's got this formula of order, chaos, order, and here he just disregards it. And I don't get why. 